Hey, Meadowbrook Church, I uh, hope that you're doing well and hanging in there this week. I wanted to take just a moment and reintroduce a discipleship tool that I shared in my message this past Sunday. Some of the feedback we got from our live stream was that it was kind of hard to see the whiteboard on which I was writing uh, in my message. And so I wanted to reintroduce this tool, not just so that you could see it better, but also because this tool has been wildly helpful for me. And my hope is that it kind of becomes part of the DNA of our church. And I also think it will be really helpful for many of us to make sense of life as we're navigating this kind of crazy season that we're in. And we said on Sunday that there are two passages of Scripture in which this tool is really anchored. And one of them is John 5, verse 17. Jesus is in a conversation with a group of Pharisees, and they're really upset because he's healing and performing miracles on the Sabbath, a day in which he should be resting. And his response to them is, my father is always at work to this very day, so I too am always at work. The implication being God is always present with us. He's always doing things in our lives. He's always challenging us. He's always inviting us. He's always leading us. The question is, are we paying attention? Do we have eyes to see and do we have a heart that's willing and open to respond. Now, the second passage of Scripture in which this tool is anchored is Mark 1, verse 15. In Mark's Gospel, this is Jesus' first address in his public ministry. He comes on the scene, and these are his first words. He says, The time has come. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. These are the first words out of Jesus' mouth. And so I want to introduce a tool that kind of helps make sense of that verse, but also gives us a handle on how we navigate paying attention to the activity of God in our life. And, and it all begins with our understanding of time. Now, in the scriptures, there are two Greek words for time. One is the word Chronos. And chronos is time that is measured sequentially. It's time that we measure on a clock or on a calendar. It's time that starts with seconds that add up to minutes, that add up to hours, days, weeks, and so on. Chronos time is measured by sequence. But then there's another kind of time in the Bible, and that's known as kairos time. And if chronos time is measured by sequence, kairos time is measured by impact. There are these moments in life that kind of become stake in the ground moments of our life. Maybe there are moments in life that change the course of your life forever. And what Jesus is saying in Mark 1 verse 15, he says the time the kairos, the Greek word in Mark 1.15 is the word kairos. The kairos has come. And then he says the kingdom of God has come near. So we think of kairos time in terms of kairos moments. There are these moments in life when God is present, when God is at work, and the kingdom comes crashing into our life. Sometimes we call them thin places in life because it's like heaven and earth are touching. There are these moments when God is close and God is near, and all of us have these moments. All of us have kairos moments because we can all measure moments in our lives that God has done something significant. Now, one of the questions that people often ask is, Brian, how do I know? How do I know I'm having a Kairos moment? And I would say oftentimes when life feels uh, disrupted, that's when we know that something is up, when life is experiencing a disruption. And right now in our country and all across the world, we are experiencing a crazy disruption. Now, God is not so much causing the disruption. Kairos moments are not necessarily God disrupting our life. Sometimes he does. But Kairos moments are specifically the ability to pay attention to what God is doing in our lives when life 
feels disrupted. And oftentimes we have these moments in life and it's easy just to blow right by them and think, oh, that was a coincidence or that was significant or whoa, that was pretty crazy. But what if we could almost enter into that moment in a deeper way to really understand what God is up to? And so Jesus says the time has come, the kingdom of God is at hand, and then he says, repent, repent. And oftentimes we think, mistakenly, that repentance is an act where we make ourselves feel bad about maybe something we have done. But in the Bible, repentance is just thinking differently. It's reckoning with reality in a new way and understanding your current situation differently than maybe you would before. And so when it comes to repentance, there's three things we have to do. One, we have to learn how to pay attention. We have to learn how to pay attention to the things that God is doing when life feels disrupted. Two, we also have to prayerfully reflect on life as it goes from one day to the next, asking the question, God, what are you up to? And and how should I be thinking about that? And then third, we need to discern in community, what God is doing. And so repentance is all about asking the question, what is God doing? What is God doing in my life? Especially when life feels disrupted. How is God present? How is he at work? And once we're able to discern that, the next thing Jesus says we do, he says, repent and then believe. And sometimes we think that belief is just this intellectual assent. It's just intellectually thinking a certain way about something. But in reality, belief has action to it. And so what we need to do is then create a plan and look for some accountability. And we said on Sunday that accountability isn't spiritual policing. Sometimes we think that accountability is all about making sure that people are on their best behavior and they're not doing anything bad. But we would say accountability isn't about policing. It's about partnership. It's about inviting people into your life so that they can help you discern what God is doing so that you can respond and specifically participate. You participate with what God is up to. If this whole side of the diagram is trying to figure out what is God doing, then the second side of this diagram is asking the question, how do I respond? And when we start to take the work of God seriously in our life, the trajectory of our life will change. And this is what we would call discipleship. Following God moment by moment, day by day, trusting that he's present, that the kingdom is at hand, even when life feels disrupted and turned upside down. And as we look for what God is doing and how we should be responding over time, Our character will be formed to look more like his. Our lives will align with the priorities and values of the kingdom. And we will naturally bear witness to who God is. And so my question that I want to leave you with in this video is what is God doing? What what moments in, in your life would you identify as kairos moments where God has broken into your world? He's trying to get your attention because he has something wonderful for you. The question is, are you paying attention? Are you aware? And are you willing to respond? I hope this tool has been helpful. Feel free to reach out to us, comment to us. When we put this on Facebook, comment on Facebook, reach out and say, hey, I still have questions, I wanna know more. We would love to process this further with you because we think it's really helpful when it comes to identifying how God is at work in your life. I hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. Grace and peace to you.